You're busy running your great campaign, and the next moment, one of your player characters accidentally dies. Does that end your entire campaign? Maybe. No, it shouldn't. Here's why. This week's sponsor is none other than Dungeon Fog. I use Dungeon Fog on a weekly basis for all of my games to create my battle maps on. I wanted to show you very quickly the color grading option, which really takes your map making to the next level. I'm going to click Enable here, and you can see it's applied sepia to my map at a percentage that I wanted to apply. So if I want to give it a slightly warmer or an old-fashioned look, I can apply sepia. But I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different filters that I can choose from. I can actually even favorite certain filters that I I like. So if I come across a look that I particularly am fond of, uh, I can save that here, making it look like it comes from an old computer game from the 80s. Um, so some really, really powerful tools that they have given us over and above being able to make amazing maps. Now, if you're going to sign up for a subscription to Dungeon Fog, which you don't need to use the software, by the way, but if you are, use the code GREATGM for a discount. That's DungeonFog.com, the best battle map maker out there. Thanks, guys. We love you. Hello, my fellow GMs, DMs, narrators, creators, content makers, and other inventors of amazing and wonderful worlds. My name is Guy, and today we are talking about what happens if your player character does something uh, which causes them to die, and that kind of causes your entire campaign to break. What should you do? Is there something that you can do? Can you do something? Yes, there is. This is a topic that I've covered quite a few times on the channel because I think it's important because we kind of go... <laughs> You warned your player about the dangers that they were going to face. You presented the thing that they were going to go and fight as being very, very difficult, and they went off on their own and they did it anyway. And then they died. What do you do? How do you handle it? Do you just go, well, c'est la vie, as they would say in France. Probably they wouldn't say it like that. They'd probably say it correctly and apply it properly and appropriately too. Uh, so be it. That is what it is. And your character's dead and you have to create a new character. That's absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that as an approach to running your games. However, if you are running an epic campaign that we spoke about last week, your player bringing in a new character can be disruptive. They're either going to have to have meta knowledge as to what was going on in the game, or they're going to have to just kind of pretend that they are invested and care about this big thing that's going on. Furthermore, if you were running a player-based campaign and it was their character's goal to run a castle and now everyone else is kind of going, well, we have this castle, but none of us wanted it. That was really dead Jim's plan. Um, now you'll come in and you're smiley and and so now you want to actually run an airship and it sort of feels very very forced and that sort of thing so that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid that so how do we do that in a way that doesn't feel like we are trying to avoid it well the biggest thing is to figure out how the character died now if the character went off to fight something on their own which i have actually found happens quite frequently oftentimes i have players not wanting to be heroes necessarily but just wanting to see just wanting to be curious just wanting to go in and sort of test the waters and they have died. They, they died. What do you do? Well, the first thing that I do is I use fade to black. So as they go, oh, well, that reduces me to zero. It's time for me to start making death saving throws if you're using Dungeons and Dragons. Or I've got zero action points. And so now if I take any more damage, I die. If you're using Bounty Hunter, for example, whatever your system might be, the character is about to die. If you fade to black, there is no rule saying that the monster has to then continue to dispatch you. The monster could quite simply revive you or keep you alive. It worked for Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Luke Skywalker should have been eaten by that Wampa, but no, instead it decides to take him and hang him in its ice cave because that makes sense. Well, uh, you could argue that it does. It's enough of an argument, though, that the player goes, yeah, all right, I was supposed to have died because I went off on my own and now I'm surviving. That's absolutely fine. So the fade to black technique the fade to black technique works quite well. Where it doesn't work though is where the rest of the party are still alive and they're like, no, we can win this. But your character, your friend is going to bleed to death in five seconds or five rounds or five minutes or whatever it is. Yes, but we've got this, we can save it. And then they l l legally die. Then, then you're in a bit of a challenge. So here are a few things that I like to use. I like to use the daydream. So yes, you die, darkness sweeps around you. And then you hear your name being called and you realize that you've been standing, um, relieving yourself whilst having this daydream of what could happen in the near future. 
The trick with that, of course, is that everybody has gone through the battle, they think it's all real, and now they're being told that it was actually not real and it was a complete and utter daydream of one of the characters. This is fine, except that you then have to completely change the actual encounter that they're going to have. Subvert it, invert it, or just change it all together so that the player goes, oh, it was just a daydream. It really had nothing to do with what's actually happening. If you just simply run the encounter again, A, that's very boring, and B, it's like, well, why does this character now have prophetic dreams? We don't want that. We want it to feel as if the character was having this weird and wonderful thing of this is what's going on. You also can't do this more than once in an entire campaign, by the way. This is a once-off get-out-of-jail-free card. Most of these are, as a matter of fact. Another option, which I kind of like to a large degree, uh, simply because it extends the campaign, is that the character wakes up in hell. Now, why are the other characters in hell? Well, they're not. The other characters are continuing the battle, but the player who died, or the player's characters who died, I should say, wake up in hell. And so then what you need to do is, as they wake up in hell, you tell your players, right, everyone, take five minutes, please. And whilst they go and take their five-minute break to get coffee or pizza or whatever it is that you have during your gaming sessions, you simply create NPC characters for your other players to play. So they are now also stuck in hell with the PC character. And what is happening on the surface in the real world is unknown. The player character, the real player character, and the new NPCs that are played by other players, so in fact they become player characters, but they're not the real player characters, they alt player characters, um, then have to escape from hell. They have to get back and get get to the surface and that sort of thing. You can then play around with what's actually happening on the surface as well. If your players are open to a more narrative kind of game, you can have it that they defeated the creature or that they are still going to defeat the creature or the time simply stopped or played differently uh, in hell. Hell runs on a 20-hour cycle or a 10-hour cycle or a 10-minute cycle. Or one minute in hell is the same as 10 seconds in the real world or whatever you want to do. You can do it that way. So the character wakes up in hell and they have to get back to the surface and they learn some additional information. That's a, another possibility. So you've got daydreams, you've got that, you've got fade to black. Another one is the kind of idea of reincarnation. Now, this is where the player character can be resurrected. There is a problem with that though insofar as if the player character can get resurrected then you should ba damn well resurrect the nemesis or the villain from time to time and the players go didn't we kill you three months ago yes you did but my minions brought me back to life and i am even more powerful now than i was when you first killed me mwahaha Okay, well, that makes sense. If it's work good for the goose, it should be good for the gander. I'm not a huge fan of resurrection spells in my games anyway because it does kind of take the sting out of death. Even though this entire video is on how to prevent death from actually happening, we are looking for ways to keep the campaign going if that is our goal. So the idea of reincarnation is fine. It's okay. It can work, but don't overuse it. Finally, and this is one that I like to use because it really is a dice moment, is you get the player characters to roll some dice and you get them to roll percentile die and a roll of a one percent or a two percent or five percent whatever you want to choose it's entirely up to you just don't make it too easy there is some kind of godly intervention so the character doesn't die the character is approached by a god saying you have just perished i am looking for a soul that can do my bidding on your prime plane and you are it if you want the job just realize you will be beholden unto me until such time as I release you from your bondage. So you can certainly do that. It could be a malicious god. It could be a good god. It could be a neutral god. It could be anything that you want. It could even not be a god, but some kind of powerful alien being that is using the player character to further their own ends. The challenge for you, of course, is trying coming up with what those, uh, the, what those ends are. But you've got plenty of time now because you bought time for the player character to suddenly come back to life. <gasps> I am alive, and I have now a dark secret of this being that's trying to manipulate them. I've done that to great effect in one of my campaigns that's currently running now. It's been going for over a year. The character died in session two, I think, but came back because of godly intervention, and then started to suddenly have to do things that this evil god was getting them to do. Subsequently, and many, many, many adventures later, they have now managed to sh shuck the god, get rid of that godly intervention, and restore themselves to life and uh, independence which was a great moment for them, and they have now grown and moved forward from there. 
So there are many options that you have, five of them, uh, in my opinion. There are many more that you could come up with, I'm sure, that um, you can use. Now, if you have any suggestions for anybody else watching this video, let us share those in the comments down below because that would be great and it would be nice to see sort of what's going on and um, get an idea of, of exactly what's happening. Uh, until next time, I want to say a massive thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end. A massive thank you to our sponsors and, of course, a huge thank you to our Patreons who keep the channel running. And until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.